Today we're going to create this electrify generator that I created in Geometry Notes. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Let's get started by deleting everything and I'm going to do this tutorial I think on a UV sphere. Yes, yeah I like that. So for this UV sphere let's go into Geometry Notes. Let's add in a new Geometry Notes. And the first thing that we're going to do is to scatter a lot of points around this UV sphere with a distribute points on faces node. Not only do I want to see the points, I actually want to keep the UV sphere there so that I can always see it. So let's uh, add in a join geometry node. And let's connect both the distribute points on faces and the group input with that so that we see both. You can now move your nodes a little bit like this. This one over there, this one over there, this one over there, and this one over there. We want to replace each point with a curve. So let's add in a instance on points nodes. Add that over here. And as the instance, we add in a curve line node. Put that over here into the instance. Then you see it's instancing like this. If I preview this curve, you see it goes like this. It goes from the origin one meter up. But what I actually want is to not make it go from 0 to 1, but from 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. To do this, let's make it that in the curve line, the start Z and the end Z is always like the same, but the start Z is always the minus version of the end Z. So let's add in a combine X, Y, Z node. Let's do that twice and let's connect this one to start and this one to end. Let's now add in a value node and let's set this value on 0.5. Let's put the value node over here and that's going to be like the end Z axis. And as the start Z value, we want to add in a math node so that we can set this on multiply and multiply this value by a value of minus one. And that's going to be our start Z like this. And now we can easily have control over the scaling of this curve. Connect the join geometry again. And then we're going to take a look at what we have. Okay, we got it like this. I want to change the rotation of the instances so that they go along the normal, so that the curves will kind of look like this. To do this, let's add in an align Euler to vector node. And in the vector, we have the normal data of each point. We put that into the vector and then we put the rotation into the rotation. And then you see that worked. Good. Let's add in a bit more randomization to this so that we don't have like a flow that goes like this, as you see. So let's do that by adding in a vector math node. And we want to put that over here. Keep it on add because we're going to add a random value to this. This random value, let's set it from float to vector because we don't want to add randomization on each axis. We only want to add randomization on the X axis. So let's make the Y axis and the Z axis both zero and then connect it with the add vector. To add in a bit more randomness, let's make the one higher and then you can make it like this. That looks perfect. Let's also add in a bit more randomization regarding scaling. So let's add in another random value node and let's connect the value with the scale. Let's set the minimum value on one and let's set the maximum value a bit higher. Actually, I think I like the minimum value to be lower. I like that more. Yeah, I like that more. Then you should get something like this. Now the next step, what we want to have is you see that each curve is now still straight. But what we want to achieve is that each curve kind of goes like this. We're going to need some nodes for this. The first thing that we have to do for this is converting each curve from a poly curve to a Bezier curve. So if we do a set spline type, then you see right now it's on poly. But we have to set this on Bezier, otherwise it doesn't work. Now to make it like go outwards we have to do a set handle positions so that we have control over like the curviness of the left hand and the right hand side of the curve this handle positions if you change the offset in that you see it goes like this if you change the x offset this already looks pretty cool however it's only doing it on the left hand side of each curve but we want to have it on both sides so let's duplicate with shift D the set handle position node and let's set it on right. And then you see you're really getting stuff like this instead of like that. To have better control over the size of the scaling, we want to make it that this vector and this vector is always the same thing. 
So let's add in another combine XYZ node and let's connect that with both offsets. So that you have control over it like this. And then you see this already looks like a big mess, but that's what we want, right? The next step in this is that we want to make it that the each endpoint of a curve perfectly snaps with the faces of the UV sphere. And we can do that with a set position node after the set handle positions. I will make a bit more space. And to get the location data of the UV sphere, we want to use a geometry proximity node. As the target, we want to set the UV sphere. And what I like to do is uh, instead of making like long connections between nodes, I like to insert another group input node that we just put over here. Then you're getting a better overview of what your nodes are actually doing. So connect the geometry over here. This geometry is just the UV sphere. And we want to get the position as the position of the set position. Then you see it's not working. Quite awkward, you would think. Well, there's a solution for this. And the solution for this is to add in a realize instances node so that we can realize the instances so that they become real objects so that we can actually do this action. And then you see the endpoints of each curve snap to the UV sphere, which is perfect. I think these curves are a bit too smooth, right? I think these curves should be more like, like lightning, like way more like noisy. So let's do that with another set position node. Let's duplicate this one and put it over here. And for this one, we want to have control over the offset with a noise texture. Connect color with offset. And then you see this happens. What is happening is it is getting more noisy, but also the whole thing gets shifted like on each axis by 0.5 meters. So we want to subtract that 0.5 meters so that it becomes the original position again. To do this, let's do a vector math node, put that over here, set it from add to subtract and subtract 0.5 meters so that it becomes the original one. Next problem that we're having is that when you change the noise texture, you will see it's not really getting like very wiggly, right? Right now, the noise texture is only having control over the endpoints because these curves are only consisting of two points. So what we want to do is we want to cut these curves into multiple points so that we have more points that we can displace with this noise texture. To do this, add in a resample curve node. And then when you do this and you set the count higher, then you see you're getting way more wiggly stuff. I do think, however, that the strength of the displacement is a bit too big. So let's add in another vector math node and put that after the subtract node and set this from add to scale. And if you set this to a lower value, you will see you can change the scaling to be a little bit lower, more like this. I also think it will look better if you set the roughness higher like that. Yeah, like that. Let's animate this so that the wiggly stuff is constantly changing. And we can do this by changing the noise texture from 3D to 4D. And it might sound weird, but now you have a W value and this W value you change that and you're getting continuously like a different seed of lightning. This, we want to make that dependent on the second that we are in our animation. So if we add in a scene time node and we connect that with the W, now if you press spacebar to play, you see it automatically changes and it looks more like lighting. If you don't like the speed of this, what you can do is add in a math node and set this from add to divide. And the higher you set this value, the slower it becomes. Obviously, the speed of this will never be the same for each lighting in real life, right? So let's randomize this. Let's randomize it that each lightning gets a random speed. We want to do this by randomizing the divide node. So let's add in a random value. And if we then connect that with the value of the divide, Oh, then you see it looks like this. That's not good. What is happening now? It is literally giving each separate point of each curve a random speed. Yeah, then it's going to be like, like this and that's not what we want. We want that the whole curve of each lightning gets a, the same random value. But that random value should be different for each lightning curve. That data of each lightning curve having a random value, we have that at the beginning of our geometry nodes in the distribute points on faces. If I control shift click on this node and I make a bit more space, drag that randomized value of it 
over here and then we put the randomize in the viewer node then we see we have data that each point has a separate random value and what we want to do is we want to transfer this random data to over here to this divide node so first what we need to do is we need to capture that random value with a capture attribute put that over here and then connect the random value into the value because we want to capture the random value now with this attribute node if we connect that with the divide node now each curve gets a random value it doesn't look like that but let's see if we make the minimum value one and the maximum value like five then you will see some curves are going faster and other curves are going slower and this is good and you can of course play around with these values if if you like another value better one thing that i'm almost forgetting is that when we take a look each end part of the curve is also getting moved by that noise texture we want that to not be affected by it so that it looks as realistic as possible let's do that with the selection part of the set position so let's make a little bit more space like this and like that and move this part up a bit okay and to have control over the selection of the end parts of each curve we want to import an endpoint selection node now if you connect this with the selection of the set position then you see only the end parts are moving we want to reverse this we can reverse this by adding in a map range node and right now this range goes from 0 to 1 but to reverse this we want to set this from 1 to 0 and now each end part is not getting affected by the set position but the rest of the curve is and that looks like lighting okay let's see what do we have now we have a pretty cool lightning animation not gonna lie but i think we can make this even cooler in real life if we would make this then lightning would like randomly appear on some places and it would randomly disappear on some places so let's try to simulate that and we're going to simulate this by going all the way to the beginning of our geometry nodes we want to randomly remove points and add points and let's do that with a delete geometry node and put that after the capture attribute obviously we don't want to delete everything so let's change the selection the selection is going to be a noise texture so that the deleting process is going to be determined by noise by randomness to save us a little bit of time i'm going to our previous noise texture that we created i'm going to select that i'm going to press shift d to duplicate it then i'm going back to the delete geometry node and when we connect the noise texture with the selection of the delete geometry you will see still all the curves are deleted this is because the noise texture the output of the noise texture is always above zero it will never be perfectly zero but we want that because every value that is above zero will be deleted by the delete geometry so to have more control over this let's add in a color ramp and let's connect that like this set the color ramp from linear to constant so that it's either one deleted or black not deleted if you now drag the white part to be over here then you see points are going to be deleted and it's like this pretty cool if you don't like this speed of the deleting process just change the divide to a higher number i like 50. If you want it to be more lightning at one time you set the white part to the right if you want it to be less you set it to the left i like it like this if we want to make an animation of this and we want to render this object out yeah the lightning is go not going to show up because the lightning doesn't have thickness yet so let's create thickness we're going to do that after the last set position that we did so let's make some space and we're going to first convert these curves into meshes so let's do a curve to mesh node and as the profile curve we want to set and as the profile curve we want to set a curve circle connect that with the profile curve and you're getting this it's way too thick so we want to have a more control over the thickness of these curves so let's add in a set curve radius node and let's put that before the curve to mesh and you see we're getting thickness on each curve this is good but i still want to change it up a little bit more i want to make it that at the end of each curve the curve is like perfectly thin and in the middle it's a bit thicker to create that effect we want to 
add in a spline parameter node. If we connect the vector with the radius, then we're getting this again. Oh, what is happening? We can see what is happening if we add in a color ramp. And if we change in the color ramp, the white part to be a little bit darker, then we can clearly see what is happening. Let's take this curve, for example. You see over here, it is like very thin. So over there, it is black. And over here, it is the other color. So like lighter than black. But we want that over here, it is black. Over here, it's black. And over here, it's lighter. So let's do that by clicking on the plus icon in the color ramps to add in another point in the middle. Then let's make the point that is all the way to the right. Let's make that perfectly black so that we're getting thin, thicker, thin. If you want to make it thinner in the middle, just make this part darker like that. And then I think that looks pretty good. Let's create a material for our lightning. So let's go into material preview mode and let's split our screen in half over here. Just like that, I'm gonna change this to the shader editor. Create a new material by clicking new and then let's name this lightning. What we're going to do for this material is we're going to delete the principal BSDF and we're going to press shift A and search for an emission shader. Connect it with the material output and then make it like bluish. I like that color bluish and set the strength higher. And if you go into the render properties, if you want to render it in EV, you can, for example, turn on bloom and then you're getting ooh, glare around it. Pretty cool. Uh, maybe it's a bit too much, the uh, emission. So let's set the strength on 20 or maybe even 10. Now it's on the UV sphere. We don't want it to be on the UV sphere. So let's also make it on the lighting parts. We have to do that in the geometry nodes with a set material node. Put that over there as the material. Let's set the lightning. Now you can remove the lightning material for this ball. And then you see you're getting it like this. And with this, we've basically created an Electrify add-on. You can use this generator on every object that you like. I will demonstrate it. So if I add in, for example, a monkey. And for this monkey, I add in subdivision surface. And in the modifiers, I do add modifier geometry nodes. And for the geometry nodes, I put that geometry node over here. And then you see it also works on the monkey. It even works with editing meshes. So if I go into edit mode for this UV sphere and I take, for example, these three faces and I extrude these, then you see the lighting automatically adapts to that, to the new mesh that it gets. So now you know how to electrify everything in Blender with geometry nodes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any more questions. And if you want to help out the channel, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.